I don't know how many health practitioners or health professionals we have in the public. Great, so you recognize this photo, uh, uh, I mean this diagram. So what I do as a public health uh, practitioner is work with social determinants of health. Uh, we know that health is a resource for everyday living. And not uh, so if you're, if you're ill, it does not necessarily mean that you're, you're sick, uh, that you do not have health. So within the social determinants of health, you can address at different levels at the individual levels, of family level, community level, or even at the policy level. So we look at the general social, economic, cultural determinants of health. What is it that makes us healthy? What gives us health and well-being? And we create environment for that, environment that is conducive uh, to that. So, but why is, it, is that important? And today, I'm going to talk about a supportive environment for health and why and how we could create supportive environment for health. But most importantly, why is it important? Um, I came to Sweden some 22 years ago as an immigrant. And coming in to Sweden as a young person, I really faced a lot of challenges because once you come in and you're labeled invandrare or, or an immigrant, then you, you, in, in essence, you're stripped off everything that you were before. You become nameless, experienceless, um, in, in essence, um, in, unable, and therefore unwanted. And that was really hard for me to work with because I came from, uh, I was quite okay uh, in, 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 what, in, in, in my family. And coming to a new country with new language, new culture, new food, new, everything was so new. And nobody seemed to be willing to learn, to get to learn who I was. So in many ways, I gave up. I gave up when my uh, my teacher told me that I could not be a language, an English language teacher, that I should look for uh, other kind of uh, uh, jobs. I could be a care worker, or I could help the kids. That was a job that every invandrare could do. I gave up when I started the university in Lund as the only and the first uh, Muslim female student wearing a hijab. And I was told uh, into the third semester that actually uh, I should think about dropping out because my hijab was breaching the hygiene rules. And of course, that was not an argument I was willing to entertain. I argued against that. Then I was told, you know, our insurance does not cover uh, if you get strangled by patients. And I thought that was, uh, it's okay, I will not hold against you. And the most interesting one, when they saw that I was not giving up, they told me, you would scare the kids and the, old, the elderly people who have never seen a person in, in a headscarf. And I thought, I'm a black woman, that should be scary enough with or without the staff. So I gave up many, many times. I gave up when they looked at my mother, you know, this woman that I have always held as a role model, who has uh, established a business, a multi-million business before coming to Sweden, who has raised me single-handedly in a chaotic country, and has raised many other kids, but nobody was interested in what she had for experiences. Nobody was interested in her life story. She was just an immigrant. And an illiterate for, for that matter. And most recently, I gave up when my daughter came, to, uh, came from school devastated because her language teacher told her that uh, he, she, she, or he wanted her to retake the Swedish uh, exam because 
He didn't believe that she could perform that well. He didn't care to see that she was actually born and raised in Lund. She had never lived anywhere else. So I gave up so many times. But I got up in my frustration, anger, and bounced back stronger than before. I not only became a teacher, I actually got an opportunity to do a PhD and become a lecturer. I wanted to go back with that paper to my teacher, but I don't know where to find her. Um, so I, I trespassed, or I trespassed the, 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 op the opportunity or expectation that people had on me. And I did not do that on my own. I did that thanks to the people around me who provided, um, who provided me with uh, opportunities, who gave me um, a, an environment that I could thrive. It was my English language teacher, uh, my Swedish language teacher, uh, Manuela, who herself an immigrant, who helped me navigate the education system in Sweden. It was the nurse at my, my, my mother's hospital who took it upon herself to learn the language, the Somali language, so she could communicate with my mother. So there were institutions, people who knowingly or unknowingly actually created supportive environments around me so that I could be who I am today. So that is something that I took with me to my professional work and my personal work as well. When I got the opportunity to do um, my PhD, I decided I'm going to do something that to, 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 to provide supportive environment for non-traditional researchers. So I, I'm, I'm glad when my, the previous speaker spoke about uh, IT and technology. I involved the elderly, people, the pensioners, high school students in creating IT systems for primary health care. I have worked in different projects, uh, either looking into challenges for people with different backgrounds uh, into the health and social systems. And one of them is the Somali Information and Business Center, where we provide uh, services in different languages, uh, in entrepreneurship, uh, health and social uh, information, and even seminars and inspiration uh, talks for, for the youth. Right now, I work in Somalia, um, as you've been told, and one during my uh, days off, which is uh, Thursdays and Fridays, I teach. This is my master's class uh, at Mogadishu University. There are only eight students. And one of the things that I discovered, you know, these are doctors, they are managers, they are nurses and, and dentists. But when they come to, stu uh, to, to class, they are just students. Nobody asks them. Nobody looks into, uh, nobody talks to them and finds out what is it that they really know. So I have introduced an interactive uh, learning uh, seminars where I sit back and they actually present their work and we, and we discuss that. And this is the latest uh, uh, project that I'm working with and it's the national it's the National Humanitarian Coordination Center in Somalia, in Mogadishu. As you know, Somalia right now is, uh, is uh, experiencing the worst droughts in, in centuries. There are about 6.2 million people who are in need of shelter, food, and medication. There's a widespread of diseases such as cholera and measles. So what has happened, and, and this is something that comes back, but the difference this time is that the Somali community, both the, uh, and especially the youth, all over the world, uh, not only in Somalia, have mobilized. They mobilized to provide funds, they've mobilized to volunteer, and they are out in the fields. But the thing is, there are so many different uh, actors 
we have the international communities that are doing a great job, but when they are going out somewhere, they do risk analysis. And th in those risk analyses, then it, it, they, they, they kind of uh, hold back because they can't venture into areas that are deemed dangerous. But those areas for these young kids or the youth are areas where their aunts and uncles and grandfathers and grandmothers live. So we have had uh, groups such as Awi Walal. Uh, those two boys you see there actually sit down and they have a call center. It doesn't look much compared to the UN OCHA uh, uh, center. But they get in calls, local calls, from the ground, and they map needs with actors on the ground. So the response is faster, more appropriate. So the Ministry, uh, the Ministry for Humanitarian Affairs and Disaster Management, we've had to negotiate and tell them, okay, we need to provide these people with a, with, with a room where they can actually sit down and work, where we can support them so that they better support whatever uh, uh, the people on the ground in, in, the, in the different country, in the different country sites. So, so they sit down there every day. It, it's very crude. We use, we, we don't have resources, but they actually write and they've been able to help thousands and thousands of people. And that is another way of uh, creating supportive environments for people to do what they do best. So, in conclusion, what is it that I do? I create supportive environment for people, for processes, for policy. And I look at what is it that determines health. What is it that determines well-being? And how can we support that? And I want to leave you with a challenge. Each and every one of us sitting here today as a professional or a non-professional, as individuals, you can be part and you can, be, you can contribute to supportive environments. If nothing else, advocate towards supportive environments for people to thrive, for people to be healthy. You can mediate and make sure that we don't, we, 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 you, you get out um, the information or coordinate uh, the actions. Or you can enable people so that they uh, become the best that they can be. Thank you very much.